So today we're going to be taking a look at Vial and just how simple it is to set up on really any QMK keyboard. Now I'm going to assume that you have a knowledge of how QMK works on a local install as well as how keyboard layout editor works. But other than that, I don't anticipate this video taking more than about five minutes. So let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Vial QMK repo over on GitHub. Now the proper way to actually work with this would be to fork it into your own copy of the repo and then work off of that. But for this example here, I'm just going to be working off the main repo. But all we're going to do in here is click the code button and we're going to just copy this URL here we're going to open a terminal and then we're going to run git clone that url we just copied cd into vial dash qmk to jump into the repo and we're going to run make git dash submodules now what we have to do after our submodules are built and we clone the repo is we have to actually create the path for our keyboard so we're going to run make dir dash p for path and then we're going to do keyboards slash hand wired slash j scotto and then slash scotto help now we're going to simply open that with open keyboards slash handwired slash jscotto and you can see that here is my scotto up folder now what i'm going to do is just go to my desktop with a new finder window because i have all the code existing there i don't actually have it in the qmk repo because it's not merged into the main repo so i'm just going to copy all my qmk code from here into that scotto up folder i just made now we're going to hop back over into a terminal we're going to type code keyboards slash handwired slash jscotto slash scotto help to open that within inside of VS Code. Now, the first step to getting Vial to work is we're gonna have to actually create the keyboard layout editor JSON for our board. Now, this process isn't that complex. I'm not gonna really go over it here, but basically you just have to match the top left legend to the actual matrix of your board. And you can find that actual layout of the matrix within the info.json file. You're basically matching these to the physical layout on keyboard layout editor. I already did this for my Scotto Elp keyboard, and we're really just interested in this raw data here because this is what we're gonna use to actually define the layout within Vial. So now what we're gonna do over in VS Code is we're gonna actually duplicate this default key map, and we're gonna rename this secondary key map Vial. Now, if we hop back over into VS Code and open up that Vial key map, we can create a file in here called vial.json. I'm simply going to paste in some boilerplate, and now we're ready to start configuring this. So for my Scotto up here, we have 10 columns and four rows. All we're going to do is obviously just fill that in here. So we have four rows and then, of course, 10 columns. Then we just want to hop back over to Keyboard Layout Editor, take note of the raw data. We're going to copy this. We're going to add a bracket here and then paste that in like so and save the file. So now this is all you really need to do to actually set up the vial JSON. It's very simple in comparison to something like VIA where you need to actually define like vendor IDs and product IDs and stuff like that. We're gonna go to rules.mk first. I'm just gonna delete these because this is my default configuration for this board. And we're gonna simply add VIA underscore enable equals yes. And remember this is lowercase and then vial underscore enable equals yes again. Now, something else I will mention at this point that is important if you're using, say, a Pro Micro is that at the top of this, I'm going to actually add LTO underscore enable equals yes also. Because with Vial, it basically enables every QMK feature by default. You can individually disable them and stuff, but it's just simpler to try LTO enable first because that will likely solve your issue. If you're working with something like an RP2040, you're not gonna really encounter this, or you shouldn't at least. But if you're working with a lower memory board like a Pro Micro, just pretty much enable LTO enable first and then start diving down the deeper path that you might have to disable some other features within QMK. Now, the next thing we wanna do is hop into keymap.c. And we basically wanna comment out or remove any references to tap dance from the native QMK implementation. Vial has a different way to handle tap dance and really this shouldn't be an issue for most of you, but I use boards like this that need a lot of tap dance to get like control and enter and stuff. So if you do have tap dance functions within your code, you're gonna wanna comment those out. So then the next step is we have to set up the actual config.h. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run Python 3 and then we're gonna do util slash vial underscore generate and then we have this keyboard uid.py. We're gonna type that, and then we're gonna copy the line that it spits out. We're gonna just paste this right here. This is basically the identifier that Vial is gonna to use to detect your board when you plug it in. Now, the last thing we have to add in here is we have to actually just paste or type in these two Vial unlock combo rows and columns. Basically, all it's defining is the matrix definitions of certain keys. So I have my 00 and 01 as my unlock keys, and Vial will prompt you at certain points to actually hold those keys to do certain things. Basically just add them in here, but you can disable with a different function. I'm not gonna recommend doing that. Vial doesn't recommend doing it. So that's really all there is here. Everything's configured and we could actually just use our normal QMK flash commands to flash the board. I'm not gonna do that on my board here because I already have it flashed with the Vial key map I want. So there's no real reason to flash it again. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna actually open up Vial and you can see in here that everything's detected. But the thing I wanna talk about here specifically is the QMK settings tab and then tap hold. Most stuff from your configuration, so your config.h 
isn't going to be copied over into vile you're going to have to manually set that within here so say for example i use permissive hold and i use ignore mod tap interrupt so you're going to want to double check that the settings you want in your configuration from config.h are actually over on the vile board there really isn't much else to say about this gui here it's pretty self-explanatory you can kind of mess around with it at this point i mean you can double click keys and type in key codes and stuff not many people know that but that's really all there is to the actual vile gui here vile i like a lot more than via because it pretty much just auto detects the board it just kind of works where via you have to have that dual merge to get it auto detected and it's a little bit more in depth to actually define the vendor id the product id that type of stuff but the thing with vile that is the only negative i see really is that it is a separate repo even though most of the code is shared with qmk anyway so you do have to kind of manage those two separate repos but with that said i don't really have much else to say here about vile i think this video probably came in under five minutes it's a very quick and simple process to set up a board on vile and other than that, if you have questions, ask down below as usual, and I'll see you next time.